Welcome back to Rural America Live. The hour goes too fast, but we are glad you are here. Telephone lines are open for the remainder of the hour as they have been for you to join our conversation, 877-731-6733. We are rejoined by uh, Leo Bose here and our other panel, uh, Chris and Chris, uh, and to answer your questions here. In fact, we're going to take our first call here and go to North Dakota, Leo, and talk to a Leo from North Dakota. So it's a Leo and Chris show right now tonight. <laughs> Leo, thanks for calling and thanks for holding on. How can we help you tonight? Or Are Leonard. you there? Maybe Leonard is where uh, it said Leo, but maybe uh, Leonard. Is that better? That, that's right. Very good. Go ahead, I, Leonard. I've got a comment. My dad farmed years ago with a W9 tractor, and he was always able to stay on his property, pay for his farms, provide for his family. And with the new technology, I see a lot of operators can't seem to stay on their own property. They'll go all the way across the section line into the neighbor's property dragging fences along. Uh, it's actually one of the competitors' product. Uh, why don't they incorporate something that'll shut that piece of equipment down for 72 hours, can't fire it up, so embarrass the guy that's farming his neighbor's land? Yeah. I guess I just, a humorous comment I had. Yeah, when you look at technology, uh, you talk about geo-referencing within a field, and you know we, we call it boundaries. So we have an inner boundary and an outer boundary. We want that vehicle to only operate within that boundary. So, you know, for us, it, it's focusing in on those efficiencies, but not allowing that vehicle to go outside of that boundary. So yeah. we see that technology, you know, driving into the future as well. Very good. But a good point here that Leonard makes here as far as what's out there and, and how it's being used or, or not being used. But, Leo, I want to talk about the technology uh, and what it looks like in the future uh, right now and how producers can really use whatever they need to use on their farm and operations right now. Yeah, and it all centers around that guidance. And we, we kicked off the program talking about over 50 percent of producers are using, you know, GPS mapping or auto guidance features. And yeah. when we look at auto guidance specifically, we look at signal correction and producers have a choice out there on the signal correction they want to choose whether that would be radio delivered satellite delivered or cellular delivered and they take that correction and then they could try to get it down to sub inch accuracies or that medium or a wide low accuracy level so we have all of those areas that a producer can you know focus in on what accuracies they need mm -hmm. and a feature that we talked about tonight is AccuTurn so this is hands-free end of row turns allows the operator to take his hands off of that steering wheel to concentrate on what's going on behind that tractor so we have a video here to kind of tee up what the first experiences have been with AFS AccuTurn. Very good let's all take a look together. On AccuTurn, you completely hands off the steering wheel, you set your turn, you come up to the end of the field, and the tractor will automatically make a full turn back into the next pass. So you're hands free to watch your application, and again, make the customer and the operator more productive in a tractor. I used the AccuTurn this year planting. I did a, a replicated plot where I had to do every other pass. So I could put in to skip a row and it would skip around and I would do that the whole field and then come back right on myself. The turning at the ends is, is a big function that we've been waiting for. We've got a lot of operators that aren't the best on the ends of the fields, can't get lined up. It's just one of those tools that makes that operator be a plus operator, right? A lot of times manually you get little unworked areas where you enter the field and it's sometimes unsightly and that's what your neighbors are always looking at. I think it's going to be an awesome application for planners, especially having that perfect turn on the end, having those point rows come out perfect. As these implements get wider, I think that it really, you know, allows that operation, that turning operation to become even easier for operators. Using AccuTurn planting long term is going to be a necessity. and It's just one more thing that eliminates air of the driver. I want it on everything. Sprayers, combines, tractors, get it out there.
get our friends from Case IH here for the remainder of the hour, and that hour is going quick. We're going to try to get another phone call or two in here now. Let's go back to the phones and say hello to Patrick from Alabama. Thanks for calling, Patrick. Go ahead. Uh, yes, I was wondering how you see the GPS and autonomous technology transferring over to doing hay. Ah, hay equipment. All right. Anybody want to take that one? Yeah, I'll take that one. Right. Patrick, that, that's a really good question. And, and one of the first ways that we at Case IH have started to tie autonomy into the haying application is with uh, ISOBUS Class 3. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but specifically with hay, um, with a ISO Class 3 compatible tractor and baler, so an RB5 series baler in our case, we can actually stop, wrap, and eject. So the baler is going to tell the tractor when to perform those functions, and, and we'll get into that here in a little more detail. Can he go to his uh, local dealer to learn more about that, Chris? Absolutely. Yeah. We haven't talked about those dealers that are out there. I know you're proud of them, and you should be. Uh, they're located around the country, and uh, if you can find one near you, I'm sure, uh, viewers and listeners, to find a Case IH dealer who is ready for the season just like you are and can talk about this new technology. Uh, Chris, the ISOBUS, uh, you mentioned that, listed one of the ways that uh, makes automation possible. Let's get a little bit deeper into that. Yeah, absolutely. So at first, I think it's important to understand what ISOBUS is, Mark. And yeah. You know, it's an industry standard term that defines a communication protocol, really. And it's a communication protocol that is across all manufacturers, all brands. And so when we look at how technology has progressed and the, the issues that have, that have come to light because of how quickly it's progressed, ISOBUS allows us to mitigate that. So, you know, how many cabs have we seen of planter tractors that have three, four, five displays in them? One of the things that ISOBUS allows us to do is use ISOBUS controllers and a single display to control all those functions in a planner. Mm -hmm. And so when we get deeper into ISO, uh, you see class two and class three ISOBUS. And, right. and class two introduces a level of control. So being able to shut off a section valve, for example, or shut off a row unit. When we get into class three, with we, which we talked a little bit with Patrick about, the implement is actually controlling the tractor. So again, in the case of our RB5 series round baler combined with a Maxim, Optum, or Puma tractor, the baler is actually telling the tractor when to stop, wrap that bale, eject it, and when to resume operation again without any input from the operator. Mm -hmm. So we're taking the guesswork out of it. So, you know, this opens up a lot of doors when we talk about uh, skilled labor, for example. Um, we can put someone who, who maybe isn't quite as experienced in that cab without running into the issues that that situation presents. Mm -hmm. Real quick here, Chris, Larson, uh, technology and where we're headed in the future as far as the forces that are there to adopt some of these things, real quick. Well, I, I think, you know, the, the, the things that are going to force or push people to adopt more technology are, are two really twofold, uh, economic and agronomic, sure. uh, and they complement each other. So, um, I mean, you're, you're going to take adopt technology to, to help uh, improve your efficiencies, but in, in many cases what we're striving to do is that it also improves our agronomics uh, of the machine, which ends up putting hopefully more bushels in our in, in our bins uh, and, and in, 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 in improving our overall revenue and More strength. bales in the barn here too. And that <laughs> yes, was that round bale. Yes, we are going to go around the table here and give each of you plenty of time for uh, closing thoughts here. It's been a fast hour. Thanks for all those of you who did call in tonight and ask questions or tweeted uh, questions here tonight as well. But Chris uh, Lurson, I want to start with you and your final thoughts to wrap it all up tonight. Well, from my farming background that I, that I have and, and operate today, you know, I'm going to take this away tonight and, and hopefully look at my spring pass uh, and, and improve on that in some shape or fashion. You know, be starting to think about my, my seed, bed, seed bed floor, how I'm preparing that seed bed for my planter to make sure that I am as successful as possible, uh, which helps me with my productivity levels. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in addition to that, I think a takeaway is that even though the autonomous tractor, especially even for my farm, and, and maybe not even for, for Chris's farm right here, uh, it may not be right here for your taking at the moment, and it may not even be for you. But along the path of towards autonomy, um, we're all going to benefit from each one of those technologies, like AFS AccuTurn, for example. Yeah, very good. We'll have a great growing season back here in the farm there in Iowa, and uh, you know you should welcome here any time. We look forward to keeping in touch. Thank you very much. Thank Mark. you, Chris Lurson. Chris Dempsey, uh, good to have you here from Northern Illinois and uh, your family back there. Uh, proud of you tonight, I'm sure. Uh, your final thoughts. Yeah, if I could depart with, with one comment, it would be that 
You know, precision farming really has a place in any operation at this point. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no longer for your 10, 15,000 acre plus uh, customer. Um, age of equipment really, you know, doesn't play as much of an issue as it, as it used to. It's really about understanding how precision fits your operation. And that could be as simple as, you know, adding auto guidance to a planter tractor that you're still planting with row markers on or upgrading your correction source from a WASP level to an RTK and taking advantage of the agronomic benefits that exist with that sub-inch accuracy when we look at seed placement and fertilizer placement. Very good. Good, good to have you here as well. Thank you. Leo Bowes, for 24 years uh, with Case IH, you have the last word tonight. Boy, and I, I kick it back to my colleagues. What an awesome group to have within our our group because it's grounding us not only where we've been but where we're taking ourselves into the future and mm -hmm. technology it, we're taking that and, and taking that every day trying to drive efficiencies and productivity and I, and I say this is that we're going to have disruptive technology out there that's going to look at things different whether that's a cell phone guiding a tractor into the future or little things that create the biggest yield potential for us and with the case IH is allowing those dealers to drive those solutions into the marketplace. Very good. Thank you, Leo. And with that, we say check out with your local dealer as well and go to caseih.com for more information. Good night.